I think there's some common misconceptions about what a legislative staff would look like. You watch the West Wing and you <laughs> see President Bartlett with 20 staffers. And, you know, sadly, as much as I might like that, that does not translate to what we do on the state level. So each member has one staffer that happens to be me. Um, and it's a competitive field. I spend a lot of time to get where I am, to, to learn what I've learned, to assist Rep. Taylor with the best of my abilities. Um, when I'm around, when it's just me helping, um, I'm working in this space every day. I'm very familiar with the issues that we work on, the bills that are currently in progress that are, you know, they mean a lot to Ohioans, they mean a lot to me too. So we're working in that space every day. When a constituent reaches out, um, I have a whole host of resources, you know, right at my fingertips to help them. And I think people don't necessarily realize that or, or what that could mean for them. But if you're asking me to engage on an issue, most of the time, I, I'm familiar with what you're talking about. If I, if Rep. Taylor isn't there to answer, there's a whole host of people who can answer or I can help. I, I think there's a lot of accessibility there. And I'm here, uh, 9 to 5 every day. <laughs> I'm answering the phone. I'm answering emails. Um, talking to me is not always just a compromise, I guess. I would say this. The legislative aides are here every week. They're here every day and they're talking to one another. While I might not see my colleague from uh, Toledo every day, she sees the legislative aides from Toledo every day. So if we're working on a bill, they're talking and they actually sometimes know more of what's going on on a bill and the underlyings that are happening. Uh, and so when I talk with her, I'm like, well, how, how are people feeling about, you know, right now we're dealing with vaccines in the state of Ohio? How do people feel about that? A lot of times the legislative aides know more than we do because they're constantly here. They're, they're hearing between them thousands of phone calls, well, times 99, so maybe 99,000 phone calls um, about how our constituents feel on an issue. And they're helping us gauge that uh, time with our constituents. They're, they're, they're our ears on the ground. We have a lot of constituents and, and also a lot of organizations reach out wanting meetings with Rep Representative Taylor. And I think it's typically good. We try our very hardest to make sure that every person who reaches out gets face time and one-on-one -on -one time with Rep Taylor. Um, but I think it's important to realize that sometimes it's just not possible. You know, Representative Taylor is great at many things, but unfortunately we haven't figured out how to get him two places at once. It just it doesn't work that way. So. You know, if you happen to fall into a situation where I'm the person you're meeting with, uh, please know it's it's worth it, I would say. I mean, I have really great communication with Rep. Taylor. We'll make sure that he knows what you need. But I would say my word of advice to anyone meeting with the representative or the legislative aide, regardless of what office you're reaching out to, is, is try to follow up each of those meetings with your email. I think it's really impactful to have that line of communication three times. If you're calling me once to schedule your meeting, then you're having FaceTime in the meeting to engage with either of us or both of us on your issue. And then a quick email afterwards, grab one of our business cards, um, reach out just a short summary of what we talked about. Um, that really helps us to kind of cement it in our minds, look back as things move, as your bill comes up, we can look back at that email and say, oh yeah, that's what they want. This is what they, we talked about. It's been three months, but it's still in our minds. So that's something I would really encourage.